What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to show how to solve exponential equations, and we're going to be writing our answers in terms of logs. So here are some formulas to know. These are the four questions we're going to go through, and let's get started. So for this first question here, we have 10 to the x equals 25, and we said we're going to solve in terms of a log. So we're going to use this formula here to go from exponent form to log form. Now, just know in terms of logs and exponents, the base of the exponent is this value here, and the exponent is the small number written above like this, the superscript. And then the answer is after the equal sign. But when we're talking about the log, the base is the little subscript here. The answer to the exponent goes inside the log and the exponent goes after the equal sign. But a helpful way of remembering this is just say bay like this, B-A-E. So you write the base, answer, exponent. Some people though like to do this when they're going from log to exponent form is they like to draw the loop that we do X to the Y equals z like this. So whichever one helps you more, that's the one you should use. So here what we have is, we're going to write this as a log. So our base here, what we have is, we have our base is 10 and our answer is 25 equals our exponent x. Remember, we're spelling out b, a, e like this when we're converting to log form. And then now the rest is calculator work if we want to check our answer. But we could just say x is equal to log of 25. Just know with logs, the only base that you don't have to write is base 10. So this is sufficient for our answer, but let's go ahead and check our work. So let's see what our exact answer is. We have log of 25, and when we press enter, this is our value, but remember, our original question was 10 to the x equals 25. So we could do 10 to the power of our answer, and to get our answer, we could just press second and the minus sign here and this checks out, so our answer is definitely correct. So this second one is a little bit wacky here, but just know we're gonna write this as a log first. We have log, our base is two, our answer is three, and this equals our exponent, we have one minus x. So once again, notice we're, we have our base, our answer, and our exponent. So we're spelling out bay, but just know if we wanted to check via the loop, we would swing like this. So two to the one minus x is equal to three also works. So now I'll just write this equation over here, and this is what we're going to solve. We have log base 2 of 3 equals 1 minus x. So now we're going to do minus 1 like this. Now, just be very careful. There's a very dangerous bear trap here. Please do not do something like this. Do not say that this is log base 2 of 2. This number and this number cannot subtract because log is a function. Okay, that would be like saying f of x minus x is f of 0. That wouldn't make sense. So it doesn't make sense for f of x, so it doesn't make sense for log functions either. So we just have to leave this as log base 2 of 3 and then that quantity minus 1 is equal to minus x after 1 minus 1 cancels out. And now from here what we could do is we could multiply both sides by negative 1. And when we do that one way we could notate this is just put the whole equation in parentheses and now we have negative 1 times log base 2 of 3 is minus log base 2 of 3 and then negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1 and then negative 1 times negative x is x. So a better way to look at our answer would be to say x equals 1 minus log base 2 of 3. But we're writing our answer in terms of a log. So this is our solution to the second question. So now let's check our answer. We have 1 minus and if I want a custom log I press math. I go up to log base. That's option A here. And I want base 2 and the inside is going to be 3 like this. And I press enter and here's our x value solution. But remember, our original equation was 2 to the power of 1 minus x, and we just found x to be this value here. So another way we could input this is just press enter, and it's going to write this here. So we have 2 to the power of 1 minus x, and when we press enter, this equals 3. So our answer definitely checks out. Question 3, we have this equation here, and we're going to use a special log for this. We're going to use natural log of x. So to get this going, we're going to write the right side as 4 over 1. That way we could cross multiply. So we're going to have 4 times 1 plus e to the negative x equals 50 times 1 is 50. And now we could distribute the 4, but it's going to be easier to just divide both sides by 4. And now 4 over 4 cancels. We're left with 1 plus e to the negative x equals 50 divided by 4 is going to work out to 12.5. And now just do minus 1 on both sides. So for these questions, you want to get the exponent term alone. And we have e to the negative x equals 11.5. So now once we get to this step, we can use this idea that e to the x and natural log are opposites. And just know here, what we have is natural log of the right side here, 11.5, is 
is equal to negative x. Remember, if I had to check my work to this, the base of natural log, it's invisible, but it's e. So I could do e to the negative x equals 11.5. You see how it brings me right back to the step. So that's one way of seeing how we go from here to here. Another way of seeing how we progress from here to here would be if I had e to the negative x equals, and I'll leave a little space, we have 11.5. Just know that the opposite of e is natural log. And if I take the natural log of both sides like this, natural log and e cancel, giving us, we would have negative x equals natural log of 11.5. So either way works, but whichever one you're most comfortable with, that's the one you're going to go with. And now here to solve for x, just divide both sides by negative 1. So x equals negative, so we have negative natural log 11.5. But now let's check our answer to this. So we have negative natural log 11.5. So this is our decimal solution to the question. But now if we want to check, I'm going to press alpha y equals enter so we could type in the original fraction. It was 50 divided by, we had 1 plus, e is second natural log here to get e to the power of x. But then instead of x here, well, we have, remember the equation was 50 over 1 plus e to the negative x. So we have e to the negative, and then we just write our solution in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and go up to our previous line and press enter. And I wrote it in the wrong spot, so let's fix that. So we have 50 divided by 1 plus e. So let's just fix this up here. I could just press second minus like this. So negative answer from the line before. And notice that it does equal 4, which was the right side of our equation. So our solution checks out. Okay, so we saved a wacky one for last. So how do we solve this equation here? So the trick is that we're going to write this with a different base. So instead of 4 to the x, I'm going to rewrite this as 2 to the second power to the x like this, because 2 to the second power equals 4. And then this, I'm going to write plus, instead of 2 to the 2x plus 1, I'm going to write this as 2 to the 2x times 2 to the first power. And the reason this works is this law of exponents. When you multiply exponents that have the same base, you can combine them to a single exponent term if you add these exponents together, b plus c, like this. So I'm basically just using that rule, but backwards. So I'm going to rewrite this like this. And now this is equal to 50. Now, we might be asking here, what did this accomplish? Well, for one, I'm just going to tack on a times 1 here. But another rule that we need to know is that when you have a power raised to another power, you could just write it like this. So a to the b to the c power is a to the b times c. So this now I could say is 1 times, and then we would have 2 to the 2x power, because I'm going to multiply 2 and x, plus we have 2 to the 2x times 2 to the first power is just 2, and this is equal to 50. So now what I want to focus in on here, I'm going to write this 2 in purple as well, because this is going to highlight when we factor what our leftovers are going to be. So you see what we have a common factor here of 2 to the 2x power. What we could do is we could write this outside. We have 2 to the 2x times, and our leftovers, we have 1 plus 2 left. And now this is going to be equal to 50 like this. So now if we simplify this, this is going to work out now to we have 2 to the 2x times 3 is equal to 50. So now what we could do is we could divide both sides by 3. And this is going to give us 2 to the 2x equals 50 divided by 3. Now this is going to be a repeating decimal. So for now, I'm just going to leave this as a fraction. But now we could use that change of base formula. Well, I'm sorry, we're going to use the change this from exponent to log form formula here. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this as log base 2 of 50 over 3. And this is equal to 2x. Just remember the theme today, one way of doing this, we could say this is our base, our answer, and our exponent. Okay, just remember bay like this. So now what we want to do is to solve for x, just divide everything by 2. So after 2 over 2 cancels out, we could write our final answer. x equals, we have log base 2 of 50 over 3, all of this divided by 2. So this is our solution to question 4. But now before we go on, let's check this. So we have alpha y equals enter, and now we're going to press math, and we're going to go up to a here, and we have log base 2 of 50 divided by 3. And then in our denominator, we're going to just have a 2. Okay, so we press enter, and here is our solution to the fourth question. But now let's check our work. We have 4 to the x, and we just found our x to be 2 point, this whole number here. Okay, we have 4 to the x plus 2 to the power of, it was 2x plus 1. So we have 2 times our answer, and then plus 1. 
And if we did this right, this should work out to 50. So our answer checks out. This is definitely our solution to the fourth question.